All right, guys, so as you can see, I just bought a new radiator. Um, I also bought a, a new DIYSF anti kilomite. And yes, it's overkill for an N55. I didn't need it that big, but I got it because I'm thinking of M54 swapping it or whatever. And it's not that much more than the 5 or 7 inch, so uh, I got it from ECS tuning, which came with the template as well, so that's cool. And a new radiator because my thing is leaking. So, to get started, we're going to have to remove everything because we need to remove the radiator. We actually need to let it cool down, but I need to remove the fat first um, since that's not that hot. Um, and then I'm going to start jacking up the car and uh, remove the intercooler and the radiator hoses and stuff from down there but before we do anything first i need to check out if this is the right part because i don't want to be taking off everything and this not be the right down part check it out see your stuff all right let's see let me just open this one quick uh, we still make the right one. I know anybody in the middle one. I'm probably normal. Uh, plus the one because I don't want to take expensive right now. So. It looks alright. I got the plugs over here. As you can see, the manual one and the auto one right there. But you already bought an auto one, but. Let's go ahead and get started with removing the fan first. I think my dad's sleeping upstairs. Okay. The McDonald's straw. Whew, it's hot. Ooh, the middle straw is hot. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, let me see here. Okay, there goes that. Let me get a light first. Um, so yeah. So to remove this, you gotta remove this. Move the McDonald's straw out the way, and then you gotta go down there. So you can see down there. You gotta remove that clip, but we need to unscrew these bolts first. Okay, that is weird because they're not screwed in at all. This one, you're supposed to screw it in from here. There's like a T something, but it's not screwed. So now I need to pick it up. I need to unscrew. There's a screw on the transmission cooler, which I need to unscrew. So I need to open this up, get the jack and unscrew everything while I'm down there as might as well. And uh, yeah, so let me go ahead and do that. Okay. I'm gonna remove the whole bumper to get the inner core to fit in perfectly, but all right. So it's going to be this bore right here. You have to remove because it's connected to the radiator. Boing. Get this McDonald's straw, guys, over here. All right, wait, just get it like over the oil filter. So I don't burn myself. I'm gonna just do the inner core pipings real fast with these dumb C clips. We need T30s both on both sides right here and on the other side. Face and this camera is annoying, dude. It doesn't want to stay on my head. Look at the oil that's on my car. Jeez. Let me see. Now we pull from here. There. We're gonna have to remove that screw right there. Um, and then that is the radiator is way too high right now. Guys, look at this thing. Look how ugly this thing is. Get this huge thing. This thing weighs around like 30, 40 pounds, 20, 30 pounds. This thing weighs nothing. So yeah, huge difference. It's gonna look mean with this M Sport bumper. It's gonna look mean right here. They gave me a template, but I don't know if to spray it or not. I think I'm not, I don't want to spray it. Um, I'm gonna show you the template I'm talking about. We're gonna see what happens. We're gonna put it on first and then we're gonna go ahead and if I want to, I'll spray it. But I'm thinking right now, I'll just leave it all off. Yeah, let's get to it. But guys, let me show you real quick what we're gonna do right now. So this is the VRSF charge pipe. And as you can see right here, this is where the old plastic uh, inlet hose goes into. Um, this is where we're gonna have to unbolt this. And this should come right out, a 10 millimeter socket, but. You know what guys, I'm removing it from here. Fuck it. I know I said it was too hot, but fuck it. This, keep it over here. Don't lose that, don't wanna lose that. Oh shoot, it's gonna be pressurized, hold on. Tight. So now we got to set up the inner cooler, the radiator. Okay, guys, this inlet that I'm pointing at right now, um, that one is has a metal clamp around it, which is not adjustable. So what you're gonna have to do here to remove that 
is get an angle grinder or something that can cut through this metal. Uh, and you don't gotta worry about the boot no more, but after after you cut it, you can go ahead and spread it out with a, like a flathead or something and you're good. So as you can see, the inner cooler is ready to go in. Uh, I removed the old one. The radiator is completely out, as you can see. Um, we took off the front bumper because I don't know if this big old thing will fit with that bumper. So I just took it completely took it off and uh, and thankfully this is already cut. I already cut the thing where the inner cooler goes into. So, um, but yeah, uh, there's there's been a, a little bit of a problem with the radiator. Thankfully, it's nothing. It's something like it's not that bad. So the reason I bought a new radiator is because this one was leaking. But I, I thought it was leaking because it was cracked between somewhere here. But little did I know, I found out that my mechanic actually put a manual drain drain bolt. He put a manual drain bolt, which is shorter. The longer one with the blue top is the automatic one. And this radiator obviously comes with both. I already put the automatic one inside. Um, the only reason, and I know I've seen, I showed you, I don't know if I put it, I'm gonna put it in this video, but I showed part where I put the, I tried to put the automatic one in here and it didn't want to fit. I didn't want to push it into our I thought it was gonna break. But the problem is when we put the automatic one in here as well, this one also gave us some trouble. So what we did was we banged it in and we removed the gasket to see if it was the gasket. And yeah, once we removed the gasket, it went all the way in. So we put the gasket back on and we're hammering it very lightly with something. I forgot what it was with that. And we were banging it in and then finally we twisted and clicked. And so it fits now, thankfully. But the thing is, I already bought the automatic um, drain bolt. It's at my house. Um, and <laughs> and I want to return it, but I won't. Obviously, I can't drive my car right now because unless I want to put everything back on, then everything back off and go get it. So I was going to return this one, but to be honest... If I want to be 100% sure it's not going to leak, because I never, you never know, it might leak, it still, still might leak. There might be something cracked where I cracked it just now. So I'm going to just put this one back on and sell this one for like 100 bucks on Facebook Marketplace or eBay or something. I'll, I'll give them both manual and automatic. Uh, since I got both of them, I'll give them both. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to just do that. I was going to return it, but you know what, man, to be honest, I don't want to go back home and get the automatic bolt, drain bolts, and put it on. And I am trying to fit these on. Um, this this you know this uh type of thing but obviously i need to put i need to put the dang thing on i forgot to put it on but i already put this one on i'm already putting this one all together and uh, i actually wanted to put the radiator in first but i think it might be easier to put these in first um to put these in first just in case i need to move them around so what i'm gonna do is put this one in first maneuver it and then once I put both of them in, I'm going to start jacking up the, the freaking heavy ass uh, inner cooler. And then I'll be able to bolt them in with the new bolts that came with it. Uh, I'm not going to spray it. I don't want to spray the decal on it. Uh, to be honest, I kind of like it's going to look clean on the uh, on the thing right here on the grill. And now what I was thinking about is removing the grill completely. But I'm going to do that after I put the, the inner cooler on and see how it fits. Uh, obviously, as you can see, it's already cut right there. So I don't need to worry about that. When I put the new bumper on, I already cut that out just because I knew I was going to get a, a seven and a half. And I know it's overkill. I know it's this and that. But what I'm thinking of doing, uh, if this engine was to ever go on me or whatever, or if it doesn't go and it stays reliable on me, what I'm going to do is replace it with an M54 later on in the future. And with, when I do that, I'll be able to finally fully utilize this. But I don't want to, you know, buy a for three almost four hundred dollar five inch if i could just buy a four hundred dollar one from ecs and gives me all the parts and you know to future proof my build and stuff so y'all might be like oh why are you in 54 so i don't want you to buy an 54 guys this spec le mans blue m sport saddle brown lci guys i'm not gonna you know <laughs> i'm not gonna just throw it away just because the engine is bad if like the vehicle virals vehicle virals has exact one um exact 335i just a 2010 i think and his uh, saddle brown and le mans blue m sport lci but his has a manual which is really cool um but to be honest i prefer automatics are faster um you don't gotta worry about the damn clutch giving out or whatever but i know these transmissions are pretty cheap um but i was also thinking about once i do the trans the engine out i might as well try to find a dct and hopefully i could do a dct swap that would be insane a 335 IS E90 platform, the sedan, because obviously you know that they don't make a 335 IS for E90s. So that'll be one of my project goals. That'll be a goal for this car um, after I fix the, you know, the bushings, the suspension, everything. Uh, once I get enough money, because right now I'm not making no money, no type of money right now. I'm going to just grind. I'm going to just grind, grind, grind until I can get enough money to buy an M54, 
do an engine now service where, I, where since it's already out, I'm gonna just do all the gaskets, all the turbo swaps, or or whatever the hell I need, I might need to do. Um, that goes that goes wrong with these inlets and shit like that. And while it's already out, and uh, yes, I know y'all seen this. I know I need to f I need to swap these out. I know I'm already gonna order these. This is gonna be hell of a chore though because you gotta put in the oven and some shit and melt the outside without cracking the the, the black part. But yeah, guys, uh, let me go ahead and my, my my GoPro just died. So if I can't record the installation of the intercooler, I'm gonna show you real fast before I put it in. But this side. It's gonna go in through here like this on that side, and this other side has where's the where's the other? It goes already inside. Since I already got the VRSF inner um, charge pipe, I already got that clamp for, from the old one. As you can see, I replaced the old one, and as we can see, the size difference is kind of good. It's kind of it opens up as you can see right here to fit the thicker exhaust. Um, I mean in, uh, intercooler side, but this is plastic as you can tell, and this is nice aluminum and with a silicone a nice thick silicone so a big upgrade and also this one has an upgrade as well because this one i had to cut it off with the grinding wheel um as you can see as you can see look at the size difference and with this one you have to grind it off guys and i use the grinder it's real fast just grind it on one side once it opens up once it grinds on one side you get a little flathead and pry it open and it will just fall right off. It's real easy. Yeah, let me go ahead and do this. Hopefully the, the my GoPros are charging. So guys, as you can see, this took me around, what time is it right now? 5.14, so. Yeah, uh, put this on Facebook already. Selling it like for 100 bucks. This, Jesus, look at that mess, dude. Yeah, so that was bad. Um, I'm still not finished with the intercooler. I still gotta tighten up the, the clamps at the very bottom. I'm trying to get them over the intercooler, but they're it's a little too tight. I need to loosen them more. But um, yeah, guys, let me finish this and bolt the radiator. I mean, the oil transmission cooler back to the fan, and the radiator is back in, thankfully. And put some water in it. Put the bumper back on. I'm actually going to turn on with everything on like this. Put the water in. Turn it on. See if there's any leaks, any boost leaks, anything. And then, uh, and that's when I'll start putting everything back on the bumper. So guys, you can see intercooler. I beat up the walls. Look at that. Look how crushed those are. Look at all that. How beat it was. Plastic. Here's the here's the intakes. Uh the the tubing towards the intakes and there's the other one. But uh and there's the radiator box. But three things you need to remove for the intercooler. Pretty good upgrade because you're changing them to metal and silicone, which are more reliable than plastic under the heat and pressure. All right guys, what's up? As you can see, it's the different day. Everything's back up together. The intercooler is finally installed. Um, obviously, as you can see, the grill is still on. I, I decided to leave it on. Anyway, so if we go in here, you'll see that inlet right there where the thing wire is covering it up. Um, but you'll see that bolt I put in. I put in a long ass bolt, like a huge, huge bolt. Uh, that you can see right there that you see the tip of it. Um, the reason was because I couldn't find. So supposedly my mechanic, when he was putting everything apart or plugging everything back in, as you can see, these two things um, are disconnected. The inlet tube, which I'm going to show you which one I'm going to buy early, early in the future. The VRSF one. That one is also the bolt was missing. So it was like loose. This whole thing was loose. And it still is. Let me show you. The only thing is holding it tight right now is this bolt right here. So yeah, right now what I'm gonna do is remove all the oil cash can, a piece of shit oil cash can. I need to buy a new one of these. I already said it in the last video. I need to buy a new one of these oil cash cans um, because you can see look how stupid it looks. It looks so dumb. And also the bottom is like screwed on. I can't unscrew it. Yes, I know the Valvetronic motor is disconnected. It's disconnected for a reason because I just told y'all the Valvetronic motor is bad. I already got it. It's already in the trunk, the part that I need, but. I need to buy an injector puller to pull out the injectors. Yeah, let me go ahead and see if I can fix this. And in the next video, I'm going to be posting a um, a video. Hopefully, I'll buy those inlets and the outlets. And we can make a update video. Because I know on YouTube, there's like two videos on, on the inlets. And none at all on the outlet. And so, yeah, I was losing boost pressure. I didn't feel enough power. So, I thought for sure there was a boost leak somewhere. And I looked at the code and it said, boost leak somewhere from intercooler to intake or some shit like that. So, I knew it was the inlet. But uh, yeah, guys, I'll see you on the next video. And I did stage two plus it. It feels no different. I'm 55, to be honest. <laughs> Not a big power change. It might be because that that boost leak, which I'm gonna figure out right now. Um, but yeah, guys, I'll let you know on the next video.